The God of the Bible is alive and well. And so we were all brought into the mystery of Passover. We've all been in our homes and it all exploded at the time of Passover. And, and it's all focused on a plague. But what's the point of Passover? The point of Passover is the lamb. The answer is not, is not science, it's not politics, it's the lamb. The lamb is Jesus. Jesus died on Passover because he's the lamb. So if we talk about a wake up call. God is saying, listen, you, you, you've fallen away from the Passover lamb. You need him more than ever. You need to come back to Jesus, Yeshua. He's the only hope of America. The Harbinger part one hmm. came out, hard to believe, hmm. 2012. We're talking yeah. about the Harbinger two yeah. today here on Praise. Yeah. But yeah. did what you talk about in the Harbinger, the first Harbinger, again, 2012, blockbuster sold well over 1 million copies. Is that now coming true, what you it, talked it, about it, then? It is, it is. And, and, I, and I'm not taking any, any you know, claim for anything, but it is. In fact, that's why I'm writing The Harbinger too. Yeah, um, the, yeah the, the, what I wrote it, it, in The Harbinger, now we're calling it The Harbinger One, but it, yeah. it's a warning. It, it's the, that for those who don't know, it is the, the ancient mystery that in the last days of ancient Israel, there was these nine harbingers or signs that appear in the land warning the nation that they're, they're, that judgment is coming, yeah. that they have fallen away from God, they, they, they are now heading for judgment and God's waking, it's a wake up call. Well, those same nine harbingers that happened in ancient Israel are now appearing or have appeared on American soil and not general things, I mean yeah. specific, I mean ex eerie, specific, I mean some involving objects, some involving ceremonies, some involving national leaders, you know, um, and it all has happened. And so, but what, what people don't realize, that wasn't the end of the matter, that was the beginning. That Because the harbinger uh, is speaking about the beginning of this progression of judgment, not the end. So it wasn't over. So when I look back, Eric, you know, I look back at the harbinger and I look at this chapter called Things to Come. And it speaks about, you know, you, you know, just for those who don't know, that wake up call that's a classic uh, sign in the Bible to a nation comes in the form of an attack on the land. And, and it's a strike and it's limited, it's contained, but it's a waking, it's shaking. Remember after 9-11, it was a wake up call, you know, and people were flocking to churches and they, we thought there was going to be revival. There was no revival because there was no repentance. And so America has gotten worse, not better. Look at where we are now. And so, and so, but that's part of the mystery. So the thing is that it, it goes, and then when I looked at this, it said things to come, it speaks about what's gonna come, that there's gonna be a resuming of shakings coming upon the land. And it talks about the kinds of shakings, we'll get to it, I know. But it even pinpointed the year, the time when this had to happen, according to the template. So much so, Eric, that, that for years I was watching this year. And because there is a biblical mystery, we'll unpack it, yeah. but there's a biblical mystery. And so, so before this year began, I also had a strong sense, and I'm telling people, you know, that I believe there's shakings are coming now, and I believe when I, when I always give like a word for the year um, to the congregation, I said that, that, the, that this is going to be a year, you'd be ready for great shakings, but God is going to use it, but get ready for the shakings. Um, and so I believed it was coming, and it was going to be the resuming of the mystery and the harbinger. And so when it comes, I, the second thing I got, I'm praying, I'm saying, Lord, what do you want me to, what's the next book? Because I asked the Lord, what's the next yeah. book? And I have a few, it could be this, 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 and, and it was this. And I was like, wow, because I've held off on this, Eric, for years, because people yeah. always say when I do the harbinger, they said, are, are you going to do the sequel? So, you know, I said, I can't just write a, you can't just write a harbinger. I mean, no. it's got to be God doing it. It's got to be things happening and it's got to yes. be God saying. So I got that and, and that I knew that with the shakings that were coming, I had to give the word out. I had to, I had to, I had to write this for this year. I mean, it, because of what's going to come. And I started writing it before it came and that, that God's people would, would know what's happening and, and would be warned. And even people who don't know the Lord would come. But so it is the harbinger two is all that. The harbinger two is, is the revelation. First of all, there were things that when I wrote the harbinger, there was so much happening that I never, I couldn't put it in the harbinger. The harbinger is only a little bit of what came to me. Yeah. So the things that happened with 9-11 that are, that are affecting us today that I couldn't do it. So one part of the new book is called The Unrevealed. So that the second part is, since the harbinger came out, it hasn't stopped. It's continued the, 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 the mystery of judgment. The, the har new harbingers you know, have happened up to this, this day. It has intensified. It has intensified, uh, yeah. And then the last part is what's happening now, is what's happening now, the shakings that have come upon America and the world, is that 
the, uh, is that the continuation of this mystery? Is, it, is there a mystery behind it? Is there a biblical template behind it? What's the, what's the point? Where is it heading? Are we approaching judgment? How much time do we have? And what do we need to know? What keys do we need to know to prevail and stand for the days to come? That is what the Harbinger 2 reveals. And that's why I had to write it. I've never felt yeah. such a compulsion to do it timely, like this is for the time. I had to write it now. Yeah, we are going to unpack it today, Jonathan. There is such anticipation, folks. But the Harbinger, to me, in reading it, again, it came out in 2012, the first yes. Harbinger. Yes. Um, I didn't expect the sequel. <laughs> yeah. And maybe you didn't either. Well, but well, God led you in that direction. And again, with the shaking going on in this country, yeah. Yeah. it's time. Well, I knew, I knew there was going to be because I knew it wasn't the end. I knew, yeah. I knew that the that what had happened in 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 2001 was, and then after was the beginning. Was the warning? It, you know, what does the word harbinger mean? Harbinger means the warning of or or the sign of something to come. So the entire thing that happened then was a harbinger, a warning of things to come later and and I knew when I looked at it and it's even you could if you if you look at the last the last part of that book of that my first book the Harbinger, you'll see it's talking about what's going to come and there is a absolute pattern I mean the nation has a choice but yeah. if it doesn't go in the in the right direction it's going to progress and that's exactly what I've been I've been watching yeah. it happen but I just knew I could not release it I could not do it until the time was right and the time is now. Yeah, get us up to speed real quick. We're going to dig into this, Jonathan. But between the Harbinger and the Harbinger Part 2, it seems like the Harbingers, the warnings, were not heeded by and large yes. here in the United States. And we are in a very precarious position right now. Yeah, well, that well, listen, you know, even that, Eric, is part of the mystery of the harbinger, because what was that about? Remember, it was the people of Israel are being warned. The Lord allows their hedge to be taken away, shaken, enemy attack, but that's it. But then what do they respond? They respond, they say, and this is the, this is the key scripture of the harbinger, the Isaiah 9, 10. The yeah. bricks have fallen in the attack, but, but we're going to build stronger without God. We're coming back. The, the, the tree, the sycamore has been uh, struck down, but we're going to plant uh, cedars or every street in their place. So it's saying we're coming back without God. We're going to defy God. And so all those things were manifesting in America, which wasn't just about what God was, it was about what the nation does. The nation was saying, we're not coming back right now. We're heading away from you. And that's exactly what happened to America. And that's why things got so much work. I mean, you, you look at how it was in 9-11. And even then it was, it was not good. Yeah. But look at where we are now. Things have happened. It's part of, we're, it's not just the signs of, of these harbingers. It's America itself is following the, the footsteps yeah. of ancient Israel. And that was the warning of the harbinger. It's happened and now here we are. Yeah, there are such close, such close parallels, Jonathan, between ancient Israel and America. You unpack it in the book. Some of the mysteries in the Harbinger 2, many of them, most of them, you couldn't reveal in yeah. the Harbinger Part 1. One of them is connected to the Pentagon. Yes. Uh, the, the, obviously yes. the seat of American military might in the D.C. area. Yes. Tell us about the yeah. mystery regarding the Pentagon, which you reveal in the Harbinger too. Yeah, I didn't even, in the Harbinger, uh, the original Harbinger, I didn't even get into Washington. I was really focused on, on New York, pretty much. You know. But, but here's, here's the thing. Uh, one, and this is part of, we just, we, of course, during this time, we'll only be able to touch on some of the many things that are, you know, that are there. But, but to give you a taste, this is in the section of the unrevealed. These are some of the things that were, I could not say, but are from there, but are affecting us, are, are relevant for us now. And, and that is this, that when judgment came to ancient Israel, uh, the powers of the nation were struck. You know, God humbles the nation, strikes its powers, and says that, that listen, you have the powers because of me, you know, but without that. So one of the powers of America is it's certainly its military power. So what happens on 9-11? It gets struck. I mean, actually, the Pentagon is like, it's almost like the ancient wall. We don't have walls, but one side of the judgment is the wall gets breached. Well, it happened. But the thing is that, but he, he, he does that and he brings the nation back to its foundation. So when did America's great military power begin? Well, we became a great um, uh, superpower. You know, we were kind of isolationists. What brought us in once and for all was World War II. We entered in 1941. We never came out of being the, the, the world superpower of, of, mil of military. And so what happened was at that same time, there was a building built that match that marked that very rise and marked the very moment that America was, was rising in 1941. It was the Pentagon. So the question is, they, they, they gathered in that, you know, on, on the other side of the Potomac and they, they broke the ground to begin the Pentagon, marks the rise of American power. What day was it? The Pentagon was born on September 11th, 9-11, 9-11. 
But it, it was, God brought it all back. You see, you know, why was it 9-11? Why didn't, why didn't yeah. all this happen on 9-11? Because that was the day of America's power being birthed. And the thing, it was long before it was a day of calamity, it was yeah. the day of the foundation of America's rise. So what's the warning? And, and let, me, let me say something else about this. The, the building that the Pentagon replaced, the old War Department, had been there, had been existed for 60 years. If you take the date that, that the Pentagon was born and add 60 years, it comes out to September 11, 2001 the exact day, the exact wow. year. And so the thing is, so the warning is, God is saying, listen, all your blessings are because of me. You, you rose because of me, I allowed that. But if you turn away from me, then all your, your power is gonna crumble, including your military power, the, the superpower. Now we are here in New York City. Now, yeah. now there's another power that, that was linked to the rise of America, and that's its economic power. It, that is focused here. This is where, it, all, you know, trade, finance, yeah. we all, well, New York. So when did New York begin? Well, New York began when Henry Hudson sailed up, not far from here, yeah. sailed up uh, and discovered Manhattan and they started planting it. What day was that? It was September 11th. New York was born on September 11th. America's uh, power born on September 11th. So even that power, and the warning is uh, with that, your, your prosperity, America, is from me, says the Lord. But if you turn away and turn war against me, that prosperity is gonna crumble yeah. to the ground. So Jonathan, what you're saying, this is absolutely fascinating. What you're saying is America's military might was born, the Pentagon, on September 11th. And really it's the seat of its economic might, yeah. New York City, was also discovered yeah. on September 11th. Yeah, yeah. Everything, there's no accident. Everything it's comes back. Everything comes back. Not only, I mean, listen, to the day and to the place of where it happened. I mean, each thing hits the place. You know, some, one symbol of economy and the towers and the other symbol of military strength. But that is a warning of where we are now because those yes. things were symbols. You know, it's symbols of something, harbingers of something to come. And now we're even seeing signs of the weakening and the shaking of America economically and other things to come. Uh, Jonathan, there was a scripture yes. appointed to be read in the days leading up to 9-11. Yes. What was yeah. it? And there, a lot of people won't know this. Yeah, there, what was that scripture? There's a thing called the Parsha, and the Parsha is that on a Sabbath day, you know, the Jewish people open up the scrolls and they have a scripture that's appointed from, you know, ages past for that day. Well, well, just before 9-11 came, now remember, there's more Jewish people in, in around here in New York yeah. than almost any other place in America, and most places in the world. And so it's there, so they're all over New York, they're opening up the scrolls, and what's the scripture? The scripture is the scripture where God says, warns a nation that has known God, been blessed by God, and is now turned away from God. And he says, this is what's gonna happen. It has a list of judgments that begin. And, and so, you know, some of them, I mean, of course it's to Israel, but God applies these things and some things are, are just that. But it says, an enemy shall come from far, far away land and shall attack you in your gate. By the way, this is the gate of America. Yeah. You know, he shall attack New you. York City New York is City the gate is the gate. Re Ellis Island, yeah. I mean, this is the gate. This is the gate and that's where judgment begins. And so yeah. he says the enemy will come, he'll be brutal. He'll be, it, it talks about, it talks about in the middle of the day, there'll be a, the, it, oh, it, says, it says there'll be a, a, a rain dust upon you. Remember this place was covered with a rain of dust. Of it says you'll be groping around like a blind person. It, 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 it literally says, and, it, and I'm not saying, you know, there's different applications, but God can apply. It says that below you, the ground will be iron. Above you, the sky will be copper or bronze. Well, literally, ground zero it was made up of steel or alloy of iron. And above them, there was this cloud that was made up of copper. You know, and, so literally, and then it, it, says, it says that, you know, it says this. It says that the enemy will come, like, sign of judgment in the Bible, like an eagle coming upon the land. You know, an eagle come, when, when judgment came to ancient Israel, he, he uses the eagle as the image, eagle. Well, it says in that scripture, an eagle shall come, he'll come like, and the, the Hebrew says, which means a swooping eagle. He'll come down through every plane. The 9-11, they came from the sky like eagles. They came swooping down, and the, the, the plane that began it all, on the back of that plane was an image, and the image was of an eagle swooping down the same scripture that was appointed for that day. And what the scripture is revealing is that's the beginning, America. That's the beginning of God's warning, but it's not the end. Yeah. You know, talking about that parallel between ancient Israel and America, I, I think of 
uh, the ninth of Av, that, that symbolic yeah. date, obviously, in the Jewish calendar. Yes. The temple was destroyed. The first temple was destroyed. Yes. And the second, by the Babylonians, the second temple by the Romans. Same day. On the same day. Same day. And so that, that's What right. are the that, odds? That's right. And, that, and, and, and listen, and the Romans are not saying, hey, I'm going to fulfill prophecy. You know, the Romans right. just, and the terrorists are not saying, we're going to fulfill Isaiah 9, 10, and we're going to have all these things happen. Or that it's even on the same day. You know, so, so that same thing of judgment, that's right, Eric, is happening with, happen with America. It's on the same day, 9-11. Unbelievable. Hey, before we move on, uh, a lot of people ask, how does he come up with this? Where does Jonathan get these revelations? It's just amazing because you are unlocking mysteries and secrets that no one knows about. I, I guarantee most people watching, and we have a very educated uh, audience, most people, I know I didn't, did not know the Pentagon was, was founded on September 11th, that New York City was discovered, the island of Manhattan on September 11th, what are the odds? Uh, tell us about your process here in researching. I know you can't reveal too much, no, 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 but in okay. researching and uncovering this incredible information. Well, well, this all, Eric, this all began here. It began in New York in the Southern, we're in the Southern end. I was standing at ground zero. I saw a tree and something said, something said, you have to seek this out. There's a mystery here. I'm gonna show you. And so it did. And that became the first puzzle piece of the next puzzle piece. So it just started coming. And then when I needed the next, and every book, most of the books have come like that. Um, and, and when I, like, okay, okay, here's the next one, here's the next one. Okay, Lord, we, we, and, 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 then, and then when I need like the next key, someone will say something, like the word will come, someone will say something, or I'm typing on my computer um, and, and something comes up that I wasn't looking for, and it's the next thing. So the, I, could not, I could not reproduce it, or the, or often, uh, like same with the paradigm, same with this, this something, I'm, I'm on my bed, and something comes in my head and says, look, this, 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 I say, well, that can't, is, is that true? And I get up, my wife is still sleeping, I get up, go into the other room, I go on my computer, and I, say, I look at the web, and I said, my God, that's true, you know. Um, so the Lord, I could not reproduce it, just God, it's just God. I yeah. could not reproduce it. It's I mean, of course, I'll research once I get it, but I could not reproduce it. Yeah, it's the Spirit of God. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and it's a wonderful thing to see. And thank yeah. God that we have these revelations, Jonathan, now for these times we're living in. There's a famous version of Scripture called yes. the One Year Bible. Yes. Uh, a lot of people probably have the One Year Bible. Uh, what happens when yeah. you open it up to yeah. what we've been yeah. calling yes, the, the Harbinger, Harbinger verse, Isaiah 9 yeah. 10? Yeah. Harbinger, yeah, for those who don't know, the One Year Bible has a, has a verse for every day of the year, you yes. know, or has a portion of Scripture. So if you, so if you open up you go to the harvest, Isaiah 9, 10, which is talking about the, the judgment strike, enemy attack on the land, beginning of judgment for a nation. That verse, the bricks have fallen. Open it up, look on the top of the page, and it will have a date. The date is September 11th. So the one-year Bible <laughs> literally joined together. Now, now listen, keep this in mind. So that means on the day of 9-11, all over America, believers were opening up their Bible before it happened and reading about the, uh, how to do with the strike on the land, about the sycamore tree falling before it happened. And in fact, the one year Bible came out in the 1980s. So it was there for over 15 years, Eric, that every year on 9-11 across America, across the land, they're opening up the Bible on 9-11 to read about the, t the strike and the beginning of judgment appointed on 9-11. And for that to happen, I mean, for that to happen, you know, this, this is another amazing thing. For that to happen, you had to have Genesis was January 1st, you know, and then at the end you have the, the Old Testament, you have Malachi. So what it means, if you just take the Bible's algorithm, it's going to pinpoint that 9-11 for the day of attack. And it, with, with, I mean, who could put that together? But I'll, I'll, I'll throw you one more about, and this is part of the unre thing, unrevealed, but it's about now. But uh, the, the one more about that is that, not only that, not only were they doing that, but around this city, before the attack came, you know, there was a sound that was all over, that was the sound from the Bible, we talked about it in another program, of alarm. The, the watchman, alarm. watchman sounds it, and what does it mean when you hear that watchman sounding in the city? It means a, an attack, an enemy is coming, attacking the city. So all over New York City, the ancient alarm of the Bible was being sounded long before the Pentagon knew, the, the intelligence agency, all over, why? There's a particular uh, portion of the Hebrew year where in the morning, uh, the Jewish people are commanded to, or told to sound the shofar, and, and there's only a few days when they do that and also pronounce uh, words of judgment at the same time. So it's happening. One of those days was 9-11. So on 9-11, they're doing it. And the thing is, Eric, it had, it's a certain time when you had to do it. It's, af, it's, it's linked to dawn and sunrise. 
So listen, dawn and sunrise began around, say, 6.30 here in New York. So 9-11 so starts beginning. The terrorists are heading to the airport. But where does the, sunri where does the sunrise begin? Where does the dawn begin? It begins in Maine. That's where the first terrorists began. As the sun was right. hitting and the shofar starts sounding, they're crossing into the security, heading to the gate of the airport. Then the sunrise moves to Boston. And so then the, ter then the, the shofar starts sounding the alarm in Boston. The terrorists go to Boston. Then the sunrise moves to New York City. So the, the, the trumpets are sounding in New York City and the terrorists go there. And then it moves to Washington, D.C. and the trumpets start sounding there. And the thing is, they go from, from, from 6.30 and then they go for about four hours. So it ends about 10. 30 a.m. Well, 9-11, the last event was the, the North Tower came crashing down. Um, it crashed down just about 10:29, and then the trumpets stopped sounding. Wow. And the word and the warning for now is when you, the trumpets were there, but nobody was listening. And God is sounding the trumpet. I believe even the Harbinger 2 is a trumpet, is a trumpet. That's what I believe I'm, I'm to do it for. I'm sounding the trumpet. Uh, but we haven't heeded it, but the trumpets are sounding and we have to take heed. Well, yes, we do. And God breathed facts and information, certainly. Some people at home might say, well, that, that's pretty interesting, but why does it matter to me? What does the ancient mystery reveal? What would happen to America next? Why should everyone at home care about yeah. these incredible facts? Yeah. Oh, yeah, because it's affecting everybody. It's affecting your life right now. Yes. It's affecting, affecting us. You know. Yeah, the thing is that, well, one thing is that, if you remember in the Harbinger, one of the things that happened is the on the day after 9-11, the, the leader of the Senate, Tom Daschle, actually mm -hmm. proclaims the verse of judgment of nine, Isaiah 9-10, has no idea what it means. He says, this is the verse, you know, the bricks have fallen, and he has no idea. It's talking about the first sign of judgment on the line. And then, but then at the very last words of his speech, he says, this is what we will do. He says, we're going to do Isaiah 9-10. It was prophetic. It was prophetic. So, so we have done it. We have what's happened. What the, what the template is: the nation is given a space of time. It's given a window of time to come back to the Lord, and and either come back to the Lord, revival, or or go go away from the Lord, and you head to destruction. You head to calamity. You head to shakings and destruction. Those are the, the window. And so that we've been in this window now. And in that window, we have not come back to the Lord. We've grown much farther away from God. And that's why I've always been concerned about this period. And because of another mystery we'll get to with the timing, which actually goes, we're, uh, I've always been concerned about this time because the, the, in this mystery is the timing of where we are right now. This very year was pinpointed. So, so I believe that there's the signs that the window is in danger of closing. And so that's when the shaking start resuming. So that's why we have to take this very seriously. Yeah, tell us about the 9th of Tammuz. Yes. What is that about? That's that's one of the chapters yes. in the Harbinger yeah. too. Yeah, this is, now this is in the realm, another realm of the book is what's happened since the Harbinger that's still coming. Yeah. True. Well, you know, there's a, a, a day in the Bible that's a day of judgment. It's called the 9th of Tammuz. And, and that is on the 9th of Tammuz, the month of Tammuz, uh, the walls of Jerusalem were breached by the Babylonians. So once that happened, the Bible records it. Once it happened, that's it. I mean, once they, it was the defensive, protective walls are breached, it's over. It, the, the judgment didn't happen then, but it was the beginning. So, so they breached it. Okay. So it became a day of mourning and weeping, you know, for years. And it's still today a day of tragedy. Well, you know, a while, what happened in between the time of the warning and where we are now, you know, since I wrote The Harbinger? Well, we did a, we crossed a major, a major a crossing point, and that is that the Supreme Court uh, uh, struck down uh, marriage as we know it. It struck down the biblical definition of marriage. Uh, big, very big. Well, it was striking down a, a hedge. The day, it was June 26, 2015, but on the biblical calendar, it was the 9th of Tammuz. It was the day that the wall is removed, that the protective wall, the wall, the hedge that is protecting the civilization is removed. And that's what happened. From whom much is given, much is required. Yes. And America, America. has been blessed more than yes. any nation in the history of the world. That's Not right. an official covenant nation like Israel, but this was a nation right. founded on godly That's principles. Right. It was founded after the pattern of Israel by yes. the Puritans. And, and you know, one of the things that the people don't always realize is that John Winthrop, who, who spoke about the city on the hill, we shall be a city on the hill. And you talk about that in the book. Yeah, he said, we will be blessed more than any, and we are, we have been, but yes. they forget that he warned, forget, he says, but if you turn away, the judgments that came on Israel are gonna come upon you. Basically, I'm paraphrasing. And that's what the, that's exactly what this is. All yeah. the, the judgments and the patterns of Israel are coming upon us. And Moses warned the people of Israel and basically his last talk or his last speech yes. uh, to the Jewish people, he gave that same warning about what would happen to Israel That's right. if they turned away from the God of Israel. And Winthrop quoted, basically quoted from Moses' speech to warn America, and that was the appointed word that, that was leading the, leading the days up to 9-11, was Moses' warning. Yeah. Hey, we're unlocking these ancient mysteries 
and bringing them alive now for such a time as this in these prophetic times in which we're living. One of them is the 19 year mystery. Okay, let me, let, me be, let me do one thing before that. Okay. You know, okay. To, just to give an idea also. Sure, uh, sure. Two things that have been up to, that'll lead up to that, lead up okay. to where we are. Um, one is, one is, remember the harbingers, Eric, remember the tree. The they, judgment they, tree. Yes, the judgment yes. tree. Yes, I never forget. Remember, remember that. Well, well what happened is, is the, it says the sycamore has been struck down. We will plant, we will plant the cedar or the Erez tree in there. Well, yes. on 9-11, a sycamore tree was struck down at 9-11 around here. And the people of New York do the exact thing that Isaiah said. They plant another tree in its place, have a ceremony, and it's, it's defiance, and they plant the same tree that the Hebrew denotes, which is the Erez tree. They plant it in its place, so they have no idea. It's a sign of judgment. And they say, hey, this, and this is a sign. We're coming back stronger. This, this was they called the Tree of Hope. It's like a symbol of America. Well, what happened to it? What happened to it? Uh, a biblical sign of judgment in the Bible is that, is that God says, I will cause the tree to wither. Well, the Tree of Hope at ground zero, that harbinger has been has been withering and withering away, and a sign of a nation that is right now. That well, tree well is I'm, I'm going to go farther. Not than, far from where I'm, we're sitting. I'm, I'm right going to go now, farther than way. that. It's been withering away, and it's a sign of a nation that has been that has been, is withering inside. It's been withering, you know, spiritually, America. Um, and then it says, "I will cut off its branches." Well, you know what? Obama, the president, came down to ground zero, and he read a scripture on the anniversary, but he changed the word. And I'm not saying he knew what he was doing, but he changed the word. It says, "God will break the bow. He'll break the weapons and bring peace." He'll break the bow an hour. He'll break the bow. Obama changed it to he will break the bow. And the White House, when they put it in writing, they changed the scripture about breaking of the bow is a sign of judgment on the land, is a sign of national judging. You break, the, I will break the branch, I will break the bow. The bow will come. Well, across the street, he's saying this, is that tree, and they start breaking off the boughs of that tree. And then the final sign is the fall of the Eris tree, because, you know, that is, when it talks about the fall of the cedar, the great, that's talking about a big judgment coming. Fall of the sycamore, that's one. Fall of the cedar, that's strong. Well, yeah. well what happened is the, the Eris tree at ground zero fell and was destroyed. And it was destroyed on a Hebrew holy day. It was destroyed on Passover. And on that night that it was destroyed, the moon turned blood red. All these signs of the Bible, and it's a sign of, of a nation that will fall. And if the sycamore was 9-11, the fall of the Eris tree is speaking there's gonna be something greater that is yet coming. And I'll, I'll just throw in one more, and then we'll get to right where Please we are. Do. Um, and that is that in the last days of Israel, and there's so much, we're just touching on it, you know, but the, the last days of Israel, uh, Ezekiel is taken into the temple and he says, look, I saw the image. I saw, it, was a, it was a false god. It was an idol. I saw the image and God said, okay, now judgment's coming. One of the signs is that images of gods appear in the land and then, you know, that's a sign of yeah. judgment. Well, America will never admit it follows other gods, but it does, you know, and you know, it's, we won't call them that. But could that, could a sign of a god appear? Well, in this city, where we are right now, in this city, the image appears, an image of a false god. It's so, it had to be the biggest uh, false god in the world. It's, the head was 300, over 300 feet high. Feet, feet on it. And where was it? They projected it, on, I'm looking at a, a, a version, they projected it onto the Empire State Building, symbol of America. The God was the God Kali, the God of darkness. So here they're using light to project to, for the God of darkness. This is woe to those who, a nation that sets light for darkness. Now, who did this and why did they it's do it? Because most people watching probably have no idea it, that no, this happened. No, and you can, go, you can go on the line and you can see it. Yeah, no, it's all crazy. The, people don't know why they're doing it. They did it for some reason, it had to do with a, a statement about endangered animals. For some reason, I, so it's they, all they put an image of a pagan deity. Yeah, yes, yes, and so and she's there. The tongue is sticking out, dripping with blood. The, and 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 on that day, Eric, it was a Saturday night. Saturday, they it was a day they opened up the scrolls. It was a Sabbath. They opened up the scroll. What was the wow. appointed word? The appointed word for the day that America put up the image was, "Do not make an image of a god, or judgment will come." And so all over New York City is this god looming, and, and it's the god of death and destruction over New York City. The gate has been breached. The towers have been knocked down. This is biblical, not All just the this. twin towers All on 9-11, but as, as you show in the Harbinger too, Jonathan, this happened in ancient Israel as well. It's replaying. It's uncanny. It's replaying. So it is literally replaying it's, now. It's replaying, and it takes us to where, this goes right to where we are now. And, and the thing is that when I look back, Eric, we, I, I alluded to it at the beginning, but I read, and anybody can do it, I read the, the chapter things to come, and I'm not saying I know, I'm just following what, what you yeah. know. And it says, it speaks about, okay, the pattern is that if the nation doesn't turn back with the first shaking, that greater shakings will come upon it. And, and you can actually read ancient old commentaries on Isaiah 9, 10, and you're gonna see it, it's, it's like America. Greater shakings will come, and I looked at it, it says, how will they come? I said, well, it can take the form of, uh, 
of the division of the nation. America is divided. We as see that, that now as a, across every across level. Across the level, yeah. yeah. Uh, disorder, the di order breaks out. We're seeing that now. Uh, the breakdown of infrastructure, we're seeing it all over. The natural calamity, man-made calamity, it goes through this whole thing. And 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 the thing is, so it's- Pandemics? It's a, pa well, that's gonna be another, there's a whole yeah, chapter- Yeah, we will, we will talk about that, yes, there the plague. is. Yeah, um, and, so, and so all that's there. And the thing is that, but it's not only that, in that chapter, when I talk about like the next shaking coming, I, I use the word crown. Uh, the word crown is the word corona. C corona wow. is crown, you know. And so here you have this happen. And then, but even the timing, because the question is asked in the original Harbinger, it's, it's revealed in the Harbinger too, but it, it says, how long is it between that first shaking and then when the, the bigger shaking start coming online or the destruction, you know? And it says, well, it's a, it gives the dates of the Southern Kingdom. And the Southern Kingdom is 605 Nebuchadnezzar shakes it, yes. first invasion. Then when is it destroyed? 586. Comes back. You put it, you, yeah, you put it together and you have 19 years, a 19 year span. 9-11 happened on 2001. What is the 19th year? 2020 is the 19th year, the year of shaking. 19 year, it's the 19th year. It's the exact pattern, the year of shaking. So the shakings come on. And not only that, not only, and that's why Eric, I, I, and I, for years I'm looking and say, Lord, and not that, you, I'm not gonna put God in a box. He can do whatever he, he wants, but are you gonna, is this gonna follow this pattern? Is 2020 gonna be the year? And it was, it is, it's not finished. But the, not only that, but Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah, he prophesied about what was gonna, the judgment was gonna happen on the 19th year, which it came. And he prophesied one of those judgments was gonna be, a disease, plague and pestilence will come upon the land in the 19th year. It's eerie, I'm not saying they did it, but these things just come together. What is, what is the name of this disease? Corona 19, COVID-19. It even has the, num years, even has the yes. number of judgment and the time span. Wow. And there's a whole mystery to this plague. I wanna ask you, this might be for a bit later in the yeah. show, but can we reverse the pattern? Can America, can we turn this around? Can we? not follow in the footsteps of disaster that the ancient Israelites walked in. Before I ask you yeah. that, I want to encourage everyone for a gift of any amount. You can own all this incredible, literally groundbreaking information. Uh, I didn't know most of it, and this is just opening my eyes, opening my heart. The book is The Harbinger 2. It's Jonathan Kahn's latest blockbuster. You can own it. You can have this book, share this information with your family, your friends, your neighbors, your coworkers, this vital information you can have it for a gift of any amount, a gift of support to TBN. Okay, Jonathan, this may be for a bit later before yeah. we close. Can we reverse it? Where do you want to go now? Because there's yeah. so much to oh, unpack yeah. in the oh, Harbinger yeah. 2. Yeah, yeah. It, it, ultimately, the Harbinger 2 leads to what do we need to do? Yes. Um, and what are the keys you need to know? And, and what is there hope? And yeah, because I'm uh, sitting here listening yeah. Yeah. and I'm saying, wow, we're, yeah. we're following in the footsteps of the ancient Israelites. That's not good because no, it ended no. in disaster. Yeah. How can we avoid yeah, this? Yeah, there is there. Yeah, and, and I go through that how, and you know, I'm not, you know, how it could be. And you do in the yeah. book. You and, absolutely. And, and, and I promise, and I, and I, and I will, and I, I'm going to get there in a second. But yet, so, so yes. to give people yes. an idea. Yes, there is hope, and we need to know it, not only for America, but for each of us too. Yes. How do we stand in what's ha happening? How do you know how, how to deal with this? Because they dealt with you know, they were also believers back then when that was happening, and they had to stand. And yeah. and you know, so yeah, I'll, I'll I'll tell you one more before that before it gets to like that section. And that is, that is this. this is a heavy one, okay? This is the plague, this is the plague, okay? <clears throat> this plague has come upon us. Now, now does God use those pestilences? In, in, well, he does. The Bible, you can't escape the Bible. He uses pestilences, not, he allows things. But the thing is that, so is the question, the question is, you know, when I, what I'm about to say right now is, it, you know, is, is not saying that there's only one cause to one event. There's a million causes to one event. But also, it's not saying that any individual has to do with individuals, because individuals, righteous and the unrighteous, it rains, even on the prophets, the judgment. But could there be a wake-up call, judgment, wake-up call to a civilization? Is there any particular sin that is, 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 is glares over there? Well, when Jeremiah prophesied of what was gonna happen in the 19th year, and he spoke about the pandemic, he spoke about a plague or pandemic, um, he said, he said, you have offered up you have killed all these children, and and it's going to come back at you. You're, you took you you. He says he looks at the valley where they did. He says it's going to come back to Jerusalem. It's going to come back in the 19th year, and, the, and he mentions the word plague. So here's the thing: 
This generation has killed more children than any other in the history of yeah. mankind. I'm talking about everybody alive today. And, but not only that, but America has had a special place. America led much of the world into it. America also kills more children than most nations and at later stages. And we are more is expected of us. You know, and so one of the things Jeremiah says, it's gonna come back to where, to the place where it, the children were spilled. What's the capital of abortion in America? Where have more children been killed? Right here, New York. Where did the plague come? Where did the plague center on? New York. Where more, pe even to this day, m far more people were, 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 it, it were killed here than any other place. Yeah, and, and here, and that's, remember what was over New York? It was the God of death yes. over there. And so, and, and, but now, what the, go ahead. Well, hold hold yeah. that thought. Okay, sure. But you were talking yeah. about yeah, the, the plague. The, the plague. Now, now, the day that the plague came to America, uh, you know, well, it, well, it was found. It, it was located, patient zero, if you remember. Patient zero came, uh, Seattle. Uh, and then the next day it made headlines all over America. You know, the, 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 it's here, you know. There was a date next to it. The date next to those headlines was January 22nd. January 22nd is the day that America legalized abortion in America. And, and not only that, you know, abortion was spread through New York. Actually, in 1970, it began in New York on demand and it spread through New York to the nation. Well, now they found that more, that more than half the cases of this disease have come through New York, just as that did. And Eric, listen, you know, this is kind of eerie, but, but you know, Jeremiah is standing at the gate. He's with that potter. Remember, he has that potter, the potter's yeah. jar. He's gonna, he, he says, standing at the potter's gate. He's standing near potter's field over the Valley of Hinnom where they, where they lifted up their children. And he says, he says, there's gonna be so much destruction happening because of what you did in the city that you won't even be able to bury everybody. Okay, what happened in New York, the place where it happened? There was, they, were, they, couldn't, they couldn't bury everybody. So they because shipped, of COVID, that's COVID, right. So they shipped them off to an island, the unclaimed people, uh, an island, and the, you know where the place they buried them? They called it Potter's Field, the same place where Jeremiah gave that prophecy. Let me throw another one. Jeremiah, remember Jeremiah cried out and he said, where is the bomb? Is there a bomb in Gilead? You know, bomb in Gilead, yes. meaning a healing, a cure in Gilead. That's where the cure came from. He's saying, he's talking about this judgment. He's talking about the children and he's talking about this judgment. Well, in America, we're searching, we were searching for a vaccine. In the spring, a company came up with one it was a little cure it, the, but the, but it was taken as the big one the, the stock market went up 500 points what was the name of the company that had the bomb it was the company was called Gilead Gilead Sciences now now I'll throw one more I'm just gonna throw one more because there's so much we just yeah. talked about. but one more is that we talked about Jubilee at other times and the Jubilee yes. is a blessing but for the person who, who took your land it's it's restitution what you took is taken from you well when did abortion begin in America I said 1970 in New York well, when is the jubilee year of abortion demand? It's 2020 is the jubilee year. You took life, 50 now, life, years, now, li right. now life is taken, 50 years, life is taken. And the day that, that, the day that New York legalized, uh, voted to legalize abortion was two votes, April 9th and April 10th. The New York Times did a study of when the strength of the, of the plague was in New York, and this, the day was April 9th and April 10th, 50 years to the exact date. There's a scripture that you point yes. to in the book that you say is critical yes. to this yes. present moment, Jonathan. What is it? Yeah. Second Chronicles 714, which we had in our hearts, but this is the moment, which it says, you know, if my people who are called by my name, you asked, how can we turn, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their evil ways, I'll hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sin, I will heal their land. Now, I, now in, in the Harbinger, Harbinger 2, I speak about how this scripture actually changed the course of American history more than once. One was in the time of Abraham. Abraham Lincoln, mm -hmm. when he called for it, and another was in the time when I, I can remember, which is about 40 years ago, when it went Carter and everything was kind of collapsing, and yes. I saw a sacred gathering. People, I was part of it. I was a new believer. I literally saw a change history. Now that we're in a more dangerous time now, now we need it more than ever. But what is just before that? You know, people read that. What's the context of that? He says, if there's a plague, I send a plague on the land. Then it says, if my people, we got the plague. You know, and then it says, it says, if I shut up the heavens, you know, talking about famine, food shortage. Well, that's this year, all of the world has been that year too. Yes. And then it says, if I send locusts, 2020 is the year of the locusts, the, the greatest plague Everywhere. of locusts in generations. So you got all, you only need one, you got all three. What do all these recent events, by the way, have to do with an ancient <laughs> Hebrew holy day? Speaking yeah. again about ancient Israel and America. Yeah, we, we, and we, we, we had, a, we had a, a cool show about that, but I'll just, I'll, I'll mention it for those that don't know. That is, listen, there's only once in, in human history that, that, that uh, people were told stay in your houses until because of plagues passing through the land, you know, and, 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 they, and that was Israel in Egypt. Has never happened until, until 2020, the people of Israel told go into your houses, stay in your house until the morning because of plagues passing through the land. When was that? It was on the very day of Passover, but it wasn't just Israel. 
It was the whole world was brought into the mystery. You see, you know, we live in a culture that's saying, oh God, the God of the Bible, the God of the Bible is alive and well. And so we were all brought into the mystery of Passover. We've all been in our homes and it all exploded at the time of Passover and, and it's all focused on a plague. But what's the point of Passover? The point of Passover is the lamb. The answer is not, is not science, it's not politics, it's the lamb. The lamb is Jesus. Jesus died on Passover because he's the lamb. So if we talk about a wake-up call. God is saying, listen, you, you, you've fallen away from the Passover lamb. You need him more than ever. You need to come back to Jesus, Yeshua. He's the only hope of America. Yeah, and I, I, God is, I think, pointing us back towards his son during this time. Where else will we turn? People, as you said, Jonathan, were stuck in their homes for months on end. There's a lot of despondency, depression on the rise. People are discouraged, but God is leading us all to that blessed hope. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's, that's the whole point. I mean, I mean, you know, again, we, we have grown so deafened to God that he has to shout now, you know, but, but, but really look, look at how we were going. Was there any hope? I mean, America has just gotten worse, even under conservative administration, has gotten worse and worse and worse. We're at the edge now. And remember what I said that, you know, there's the window edge and even the election, I believe is part of that too. Yeah. We're on the edge. And so we more than ever must be praying, take this seriously. This is our moment. This is our prophetic moment. You know, now than ever, we have to rise to it. If we choose, if we make the wrong choice, if we choose the wrong way, this doesn't end well. I, I, I don't believe so. And I, I believe, I, I'm gonna, I, I believe that what we've seen, people say, okay, I believe it's not just that things are continuing. I believe the shakings and more shakings are not, it's not finished. Um, but God can bring revival. I believe, but, but you cannot have revival without repentance. You know, you can't have the blessings of God in your life without repentance. Repentance is a great thing. But after 9-11, you know, we had all the, all the big thing, the big shows on, but we didn't have any revival. We didn't have any return. We, I mean, we didn't have a repentance. Without repentance, there's no revival. And so we got worse. But, but, but listen, it begins with us. It begins with the house of God. We each, it, we have to say, Lord, I repent from anything in my life that shouldn't be there. I'm repenting. And whatever should be that's not I'm repenting it begins with us when we come together in Washington we're gonna be repenting for the church first yeah. then we're gonna intercede for America and the nations and we're gonna sound the shofar and do all those things, you know a prophetic moment but that but it's got to be that and this whole time of you know coming up this period when this probably will air I believe it's a critical time in the September and the autumn as we head into this time of trumpets and the, and the time of repentance on the biblical calendar I believe it's gonna be a critical time I remember Eric that when I was a new believer and, and I told I give you a little hint that everything was falling apart in America, not like now, it's worse, but, yeah. but falling apart with the Carter and, and economy and the hostages in Iran, death to yeah. America. And they, we said, let's gather. We gathered it in Washington. If my people, if my people, if my people, pray, Lord, release the hostages, you know. And we all pointed our hands to the Capitol saying, put who you want there. Uh, a number of months later, revolution in the polls and Ronald Reagan came in and people were saying, listen, we got to come back to our biblical values. Ronald Reagan said, city on a hill. He's quoting John Winthrop. And he stood in the very spot where we, were, we placed our hands. They changed the inauguration. So it was right there, and that same hour they released the hostages, and everything turned around. It was called Morning in America, economy. Yes. But it, it turned around, and it's not about politics, it's not about a man. Turned around as he had his hand on the Bible, was sworn in. Well, his hand was on a verse that, it all, that America's history changed and the world's history changed. What was the verse? If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, I will heal their land. Wow. It can happen again. I mean, my, my feeling is, I mean, you know, there's gonna be dark, there's dark things coming, but there can be revival in the midst. In fact, we, we're praying for worldwide revival. You know, yes. we're all, we believe that there's also that. The end times aren't just bad. There's also world revival. And so we're praying for that. And, and we're praying, you know, whatever we can do, we repent here in America for the, for, for the world. So I believe there can be both things happening at once, even persecution and revival. God's bringing it back to the beginning. You know, like, yes. like, like, like in, the, in the days of Acts. I'll, I'll throw something in. You may, we mentioned John Winthrop. You know? Yes. Well, well you, know, you, know, you know, he's the one who gave the warning. He, gave, he said, you know, we'll be a on the hill and we are we have been uh, and, and he said but if you don't you know these judgments are coming okay he gave the warning but but he actually built a city on uh, he built what he thought what we saw as a city on the hill and that was Boston Boston was the city that wow. he he governed he was over Boston and and that was his city you know and he lived there and done and so where did 9-11 begin in Boston, yes. I mean Boston, where the city on the hill, where he gave the warning. But not only that, Winthrop was on an island. He had his own island uh, right off of Boston, and and he prayed there and prayed, anyway. and and he lived there. He died, and but he prayed and he prayed for America. He prayed for this, um, and it was called Governor's Island because he was the governor. Okay, mm -hmm. but where what happened to that island? It became Logan Airport, the place where 9/11 began. 
So it literally, from the warning, it's going to take, God's taking it back to the warning, saying, listen, guys, I'm calling you back. This is your chance. Return to me, and I will return to you, America. Return to me, says the Lord. He'll keep his word. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. Without you, we couldn't do it. God bless you.